Am I audible? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, chiplets from the test perspective because uh, I come from the test background. And um, there is a lot of uh, hype about uh, chiplet able to bring the product to market faster. But uh, we need to look at in another dimension. We need to in definitely need to ensure that uh, uh, the chiplet is, uh, when integrated, we need to have the ability to test uh, to the expectation what uh, the product uh, is supposed to function. So uh, I'm going to kind of go through some agenda here uh, so that you know, I kind of bring you to the thought process what uh, I want to convey. So I'll spend some time in what is a KGD. It's not a new thing, but from the chiplet perspective, what is the difference I'm going to talk about? Then what is the significance of a known good die from the chiplet perspective? I'll cover some slides. Then uh, we need to look at uh, um, known good die monitoring. I'll also tell why it is important, followed by traceability. And um, when uh, you do build a product with the chiplets from different vendors, but you need to guarantee something to your customers. So I'll talk about the link, uh, how the actual use case leading to system level test and production which is a kind of uh, you know, a key thing that we may need to address uh, as a part of uh, you know, building solutions and uh, testing the uh, devices. And uh, last, I will also cover uh, the flow that is recommended with the chiplet-based uh, integration. And I'll do a quick summary. So I'll go with the first thing. Uh, DICE has been tested uh, in the past for many decades. Uh, um, you know, basically, um, I'm talking about, when I say die, I'm talking about the monolithic integration. So if you have a die, if it is tested in a wafer sort, if you put it in a package, the functionality is not going to vary much. So what you tested in the wafer sort pretty much is uh, kind of you know, applicable to uh, the um, package die. And we basically look at some assembly defects. So the functionality doesn't change. And the DPPM number that you want to commit to your customer is pretty much within your hands, because you design the die, and you are going to define the quality levels. And you can basically tell this is what the DPPM level that your customer can expect. Whereas in the known good die for heterogeneous IC package devices, you are going to incorporate third party dies, which is like you know, chiplet and HBMs and CERDIS, IPs, and things like that. Individual die do not necessarily define the functionality of the package, and it could be only partial. That's another thing. And assembly defects after a particular KGD put not directly detect, uh, um, you know, detectable, because some of them are interconnects in the substrate level, which are not accessible in the package level. So that makes little complex. Uh, or we need to have a uh, not an afterthought, but you know, you need to do some consideration before you do this. Now, you are going to commit some quality levels of DPPN number to your customer, whereas those chiplet is not from you. So having said that, you know, uh, uh, how do I uh, commit is another thing that you need to look at when you integrate a um, device in heterogeneous package using chiplets. So uh, the DPM becomes now additive, and your customer might expect. And that kind of alignment is another key thing that need to be kind of looked upon. Now I'll go into the significance of a known good die from the chiplet perspective. Um, uh, now uh, you are designing a chiplet, uh, keeping in mind that uh, it is not going to be like in a few inches away, but the standard defines uh, like you know you are going to drive uh, uh, in another chiplet uh, with like few millimeters away, and that poses a challenge. The reason being that uh, in ATE. Uh, we assign the resource to test it, and these are all like six inches away. How do I bring uh, a die which is supposed to only drive few millimeters to a six inch length in the ATE is a challenge. There are techniques we could do, but these are the thoughts you need to keep in mind before you kind of uh, you know, uh, uh, test it. So of course, a loop back test is a key thing. We will still adapt. Um, now uh, new techniques are available from MEMS and other uh, technology where the um, you know, the quality of the loopback can be made much, much uh, better. And, uh, <clears throat> and you, you need to also look at, you know, uh, in the AT world uh, aspect of it, uh, we basically test the die in a few seconds. If you have a few blocks of uh, 
memory, mixed signal, power management, or something. We just test those individual boxes and say that you know the die is good. Um, also, um, uh, the reality of uh, SI and uh, um, you know PDN simulation you do on the substrate level is uh, is a simulation. But in reality, how does it match due to process variations is a key thing, and uh, thereby you know. Uh, uh, it is very important to say that you know if you have multiple chiplets put into the substrate, and uh, later you found that some issues are there, it is a very costly affair. So uh, the substrate itself may need to be tested. So another aspect, uh, giving a dimension to uh, the heterogeneous integration. So it could be a organic substrate or a silicon-based substrate, and um, some level of uh, testing need to be done. Uh, bare minimum, we do open and short, but since uh, we are going to talk about very high speed lanes connecting uh, a chip to chip, thereby, you know, uh, we need to look at uh, the possibility of uh, uh, sampling some of the substrate, make sure that the substrate is good before it is integrated. If not all the substrates, but, you know, some of them can be sampled. Uh, keeping in mind that, you know, uh, you buy a chiplet, it is designed for a certain spec, Whereas you are going to develop a product based on that, there are variabilities based on uh, you know the package and other parasitics comes into picture. So do you want to keep a uh, uh, yeah, typical three sigma as a limit in order to god band you and guarantee your design, or you should push further down? Is another thought you need to put in, which calls for uh, you know understanding the requirement uh, from the total integration of uh, um, you know. Uh, heterogeneous integration perspective. Um, <clears throat> also, we need to look at, uh, you know, testability angle. Uh, uh, if you have a very high digital content, uh, you could uh, implement a DFT approach uh, to test the content, whether it's, uh, you know, covering all the requirement. But now you have uh, dice, like, you know, in some cases, maybe 20 chiplets in a SIM integration. How do you ensure that uh, the testability is taken care and keeping in mind that these chiplets come from many vendors, you know, how do you take care in terms of DFT approach uh, to ensure that it is still testable? LAWN 49.10 can be explored, but this standard was developed for a monolithic integration. Should we look at, you know, working with the IEEE uh, consortium to look at, you know, such standard can be extended into, you know, um, testing the chiplets after it is integrated. So that uh, from monolithic, how do we go into the heterogeneous integration from the um, DFT perspective, which includes uh, the collaborative uh, work with the EDA tool vendors as well. Um, the other aspect is like, you know, when you have the chiplets uh, assembled uh, in, you would have characterized and uh, uh, qualified the chiplet uh, for thermal and electrical performance as a standalone, but now we are going to put everything together and uh, I have seen some dead aspect, like, you know, more than 1,000 watts for one chiplet. So many things comes into picture. Are you able to make sure that your power rail voltage is monitored properly, which the chiplet would not, vendor would not have addressed it, whereas when you build a product, you need to look at in that perspective. The temperature aspect profiling would have been done for a separate chiplet, but now that you have other chiplets, which is not like inches far away, but in millimeters, so the neighboring in terms of uh, uh, heat dissipation uh, from uh, the neighbor chiplet to yours, how does it is taken care? As a product company, you need to ensure that. So which calls for monitoring, uh, both uh, in terms of process and voltage rail. And this can be also utilized for uh, you know, optimizing the performance. If you have the margin of uh, you know, 100 millivolts there, you know, depending upon your performance, you could uh, communicate to the PIMIC chip to tell, you know, hey, you know, you could uh, run some more uh, uh, workload on the uh, particular chiplet so that, you know, the monitoring helps in even optimizing the uh, performance of the workload. The last one is I talked about uh, the thermal aspect of it. So in the assembled one, I saw some of the uh, uh, demos here. They are talking about system level cooling where you have a fancy cooling mechanism goes into the um, um, chip uh, uh, or the uh, IC, packaged IC comes out. Whereas in the testing aspect, you only have like a few minutes to test it. And uh, the thermal profiling uh, uh, or to control the temperature of the dye cannot be 
you know, so um, fancy like what you see here. So there are some now advanced uh, uh, equipments available for zonal temperature. So if you're able to monitor the packaged dye at uh, different zones of temperatures, so uh, selective uh, thermal management on certain area of the packaged device can be controlled by the modern equipments. So incorporating uh, temperature monitoring not just within one dye, but in the package level calls for, you know, whether you want to use uh, organic substrate or you should go for uh, active silicon-based uh, substrate where some of this uh, monitoring can be built into the substrate and can be read later. Um, the other aspect is the structural monitoring. Uh, um, since uh, the heavy compute happens uh, in very low process nodes, there are chances that uh, due to various aspects, uh, um, the uh, delay of uh, certain uh, uh, gates would uh, age as it uh, matures. So uh, silicon monitoring became uh, one aspect of it. I can talk a little bit later, but with, due to timeline, I'm just uh, rushing it uh, here. So uh, EDA vendors are providing silicon management uh, tool where you could uh, get the sign of the age of a particular component. Based on that, you can take some decision. So those has to be looked upon uh, not from chip lateral perspective, but as a whole system when you put into a package. The other aspect is uh, what happens, uh, you, you send a package device to your customer and there is a failure. And this is going to be in a mission critical applications in automotive or it could be in uh, you know, data centers. And you want to know the root cause quicker, at least to some extent. So when the product fails in the early stage in the infant mortality, the traceability importance is very high. I'm not saying that over the period would go down drastically, but the work uh, uh, need to be done here is more important and has to be done quicker. In that perspective, uh, there are many data available, wafer ID, die ID, assembly data, and test data. Some of them we need to take it quicker. That can be decided upon by the particular customer who is going to build a product. But what I'm trying to say is say, a simple uh, a 2D barcode you can put on the die or the packaged IC is not going to help. So you need to look at the traceability from uh, you know, a very long period of time. In the case of automotive, it extends up to 15 years. And uh, nobody knows what die from which vendor went into the packaged IC, and it is somewhere sitting in the uh, um, you know, um, uh, customer place uh, uh, in the data center, and we should be able to retrieve it quickly. So uh, the way to retrieve it quickly through electronic means is uh, good, but uh, there are standards which stipulated by SEMI T23 doesn't support all these things. Maybe we have to look at the extension of incorporating such standard also. Um, as I mentioned that, you know, uh, um, from the chiplet perspective, when you have a bigger uh, integrated IC, uh, you may need to run the actual use case test than your functional uh, vectors and the scan vectors to ensure the product is good. And uh, that leads for the requirement of uh, system level test. Uh, because in the AT perspective, you do like in few minutes, you tell pass or fail. But in the real application, you need to make sure that, uh, you know, um, uh, which is run for 24 hours. So, System level test, I'm not talking about uh, system validation platform, I'm talking about real system level test, which you can put the device to run on for minutes or hours. And that requires uh, you know, additional capex uh, you know, to be uh, in, uh, invested into uh, the production line. And um, thereby, uh, you know, uh, the cost of test is uh, when the chiplet world is going to increase, where you see some advantage in the other areas. So, to summarize the cost perspective, every chiplet you goes into the package need to be tested, so which adds cost. And uh, uh, when you test in chiplet perspective, you can do much more parallelism, uh, more than eight. But when it goes into the packaged IC, which is tested in ATE, which has got limited channels, and your package performance uh, uh, is also uh, influences this, and the parallelism will reduce thereby your cost is going to go high, test cost, definitely. And uh, on top of it, I told system level test is going to add some more cost. Then um, you, know, you need to look for some uh, uh, specific uh, uh, handlers which can run like you know, high heavy parallelism, more than 300, 400 kind of devices at the same time. And then you can ship to the customer. And some people are not confident after system level test, they want to put uh, their product into you know, 
um, one more ATE test just to ensure that the product is not damaged by system level test. In quick summary, um, <clears throat> there is a challenge in testing the chiplet where because it is designed to only drive few millimeters in terms of IOs, and you need to look at uh, the uh, um, you know uh, a guard banding to ensure that the the account of heterogeneous packages uh, pass uh, influence, and uh, you need to be uh, you know, uh, the DPM number is uh, additive, all the chiplet goes into it, so uh, that is another new thing that when it comes into chiplet. And uh, die level traceability is important in the event that if your IC fails in the field, you want to quickly find out what went wrong. And um, system level test to run the real use case is another element which goes into when, uh, when compared to heterogeneous uh, IC integration based on and uh, the chiplet DFT architecture considering the heterogeneous integration, not uh, just uh, the chiplet itself. So DFT beyond, uh, uh, outside the chip also need to be thought so that you know when you put multiple chiplets from different vendors, you could uh, achieve certain coverage. That's pretty much I want to cover, so <laughs> um, I thought I'm able to do it in the time given. <laughs> Thank you. Our next speaker is actually going to talk about a uh, smart NIC environment or platform.